All right, this is Math Lortzen, and we're going to do a proof with a double substitution. This is kind of the angle version of a double substitution proof. The given information is angle ABY is congruent to angle XYB. So visualize that. The big corner angles are congruent. And also that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. What I'm trying to prove is that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So I want to prove that this angle and this angle are congruent. Always start with your given. So go ahead and copy that information into your statement. And the first reason is always given. Now what I want to do next is talk about if I'm dealing in congruence, notice I'm using congruent signs, congruent signs, and eventually I'm going to be using um, measurements. So I want to be talking about angle measures so that I can compare them and use them in equations. If I want to go from congruence to measurement, I have to use the definition of congruence and then start using the language of the measure of angle ABY is equal to the measure of angle XYB and the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. So really all I did was copy down my given information but I wrote it in terms of equations and measurements instead of congruence based on definition of congruence. Now maybe the trickiest part here is seeing that well I got a bunch of angles going on there's no bisectors, there's no supplementary. Um, it looks like they might be right angles, but it doesn't say that, so I can't just assume that. It really boils down to, well, if I don't know anything else about the angles, I start talking about angle addition. The angle addition postulate. So I'm going to start talking about how this big angle and this big angle over here are the little angles added up together. For instance, the measure of angle ABY is actually just the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And in the same way, the big angle on the right side, the measure of angle XYB is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. So I'm making two basic statements on the angle addition postulate. 3 and 4 add up to give me the big angle. 1 and 2 add up to give me the big angle. Here's the trickiest step. What I need to do is say, well, I already know that ABY and XYB have equal measurements. So I can set them equal to each other in an equation. But instead of writing ABY, I'm going to write 1 plus 2. And instead of writing XYB, I'm going to do 3 plus 4. Because they're the same thing. I've already defined that. So what I would say now is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. What I just did was a basic substitution. Instead of using ABY, I substituted in something that I knew about it. Instead of using XYB, I substituted in 3 plus 4 because it was also something I knew about it. The whole reason I do that is hopefully you can start to see now my whole goal is to prove that 2 is congruent to 4. And now I have an equation with a 2 on one side and the 4 on the other side. This is getting good. You might not think so, but I think so. So the next step, though, is thinking about how could I get it so that angle 2 and angle 4 were by themselves and the 1 and the 3 would go away. I can't just make them disappear. That would be awesome though. That's where this key piece of information comes in. Angle 1 and angle 3 have the same measurements. I can use them wherever I want in a substitution type situation. So instead of writing measure of angle 1, I'm going to write the measure of angle 3. They're the same measurements so I can substitute that in. 
I'm going to keep the rest of the equation the same. What I did was just another substitution. Notice 4 and 5 are the same exact equation except I substituted at angle 3 for angle 1. Now hopefully you're starting to see okay I have a 3 on this side a 3 on this side I can subtract that from each side and get the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4. That was the subtraction property of equality. Now, I kind of ran out of room here. I'm gonna, this is my first video on this device, so I'm going to try to drag it. Oh, never mind. Basically, I'll talk you through the last step. We're basically there, um, but notice we've got to say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So step 7 is definition of congruence. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Okay. So this is a double substitution because I have two substitutions right there. It's very similar. Think about when we did the, the one with segments. It's a very similar process. So that's why I'm having you do this one also.